the lake will be very busy. There's boats zipping up and down, but you won't catch me in one night. I'm, I'm yet to, to throw a rod in the water now. Stephen, um, what was your GA journey so far? For me, I would have started when I when I was young, young kid like yourself, and um, probably started off in the, the back garden just with my parents and stuff like that. Just it was predominantly hurling, I suppose, um, from North Tipperary. So hurling is the main game up there, but would have played a bit of football too, soccer, rugby, the whole lot. But I probably found myself veering towards GA a lot more, kind of from when I was 13 or 14 onwards. Would have been playing the whole way up along with my club and with Tipperary, both hurling and football. Joined the senior football team back in 2013, I think it was now. Um, so I've been playing senior football since then, apart from a two year sabbatical playing senior hurling with Tip um, in 2016 and 2017. But I'm back footballing now and stuff like that. Oh, very good. And what, what was your preferred? When I was younger, it would have been all hurling. Just, yeah. I suppose, the environment I was in, um, like North Tip, is just hurling mad. Um, so I probably would have said would have said hurling, but probably would have found myself personally veering towards football just because I was getting a bit of, yeah. bit of success with it. So um, hurling was definitely my number one, um, but I was happy to fall back to football then, I suppose. Oh, very good. And who was the biggest influence in your football career? In my football career, like like anyone, I suppose your family, your parents have been huge. Have been huge. Um, they just bring me to all the games, all the trainings, um, stuff like that. But I suppose David Power, our current manager, probably took a took a chance on me as a very raw sixteen year old who wouldn't have played a lot of football, but he kind of gave me the benefit of the doubt and brought me in onto the the, the development squad at the time. And I've dealt with him a lot since then. And then I suppose when I was in college too, I went to DCU. And they would have brought on my football no end, to be honest. Um, Joe, getting into that real competitive environment, playing Sigurdsson football and playing with some of the best players in the country. So definitely um, between my family, David Power and, and the college I went to, they, they've been the biggest influence on my football. Kicking the ball when you were a young fella, did you ever think you'd make the inter-county big stage? Yeah, I suppose as, as a kid we all have dreams and ambitions to, to represent our county. For me, it probably was slightly different in that I was thinking I'd Hurling. be wearing a, a helmet first. but. Um, Look, I, I definitely always wanted to play inter county. Probably had that small bit of belief in myself, but it probably took a couple of years until I started getting a bit of success when I was more of a teenager, I suppose, rather than, than a young kid. So, Stephen, um, before uh, games at the weekends, what, um, what, what do you do? What do you do the night before a game? The night before a game, it, for me, it's all about distraction. Try to push the game that's on tomorrow away from me and fill my time with, with everything else, whether that's meeting friends. Um, and you're probably you're obviously doing your carb loading and stuff like that, so you're making food and all stuff like that. But probably watching television, just chilling out, just trying to kind of find a bit of downtime, and um, just keep the mind occupied with with anything else other than football, really. I suppose. Is there any uh, hidden gem in Tipperary we should know about? In Tipperary itself, I would sure I'd be biased, of course, being from um, Ballina, I suppose. Um, just there on the Loch Derg, lovely scenic place. Great when the weather comes good. It, Kind of attracts a lot of tourists, kind of from the Limerick side of things, and they they come in around them. Um, but it's it's a lovely spot. Would you do any fishing or anything down with them scenic? Uh, yeah, lakes? like it would it would be a big fishing area, especially now with the with the mayfly and stuff like that. The the lake will be very busy. There's boats zipping up and down, but you won't catch me in one night. I'm I'm yet to to throw a rod in the water now. I I'd, I'd, uh, I wouldn't be any good at now. I wouldn't have the patience for it really. What else do you do, uh, Stephen, apart from playing football? Like what other hobbies apart? From Apart from playing football and stuff, look, I come from a farming background, um, so we're a dairy farm at home, so um, I'd be helping out at home as much as I can, um, probably less than my father would like, but um, no, I, I do try to give a hand as much as I can, as much as football would allow, um, between work and football it's hard to find time, but I do enjoy definitely going out giving him a hand. Um, and that's probably... The can't, can't beat the farm, it's that's good it, distraction. Exactly. Stephen, who are training, who's your toughest opponent to mark? Or? I suppose this year, I don't know whether it's because the legs are gone or not, I've been shipped into the full forward line, um, and I end up picking up the likes of uh, Shane O'Connell or Jimmy Fien, so I, I'd find them t tough to mark, they're, they're very tight, tenacious, um, so they're probably the toughest mark, and if I had to pick between them, probably Shane. Shane is, uh, he's wiry, and he'll, he'll keep you on your toes, all right, yeah, so uh, Shane O'Connell, I, I would say, is the toughest mark of training. Who would be the joker of the, the team? Uh, there's a few lads who think they're the jokers, all right, um, they'd be um, th letting out a few jokes and stuff like that, but I suppose Emmett Maloney would be, would be the, the common one, I suppose, he's, he's always up for the crack and having a good laugh with all the lads, to be honest, so yeah, Emmett Maloney. Is he the best DJ too? He, he likes to take control of the music too. Um, he's actually not the worst. Sean O'Connor does try to get in with his playlist and stuff like that, but 
no, I probably wouldn't be a fan of Shawnee's music, so I'm happy <laughs> enough when Emma takes over. Who's your motivation talker in the dressing room? Yeah, I suppose we, we've a good few lads now on the tip panel who kind of step up and give you a few words kind of for the match, like so Shane O'Connell and, and Teddy Dye will always have their, their voices heard and it, it always get, gets you going all right. And we're very lucky to have the likes of Connor Sweeney, who is, who's seen it all. While he's injured at the minute, he's, you'd still see him knocking around training and Connor is the kind of type that when he talks, you, you listen like Joe. It's um, he has the experience and stuff like that, but he's um, he he believes in what he's saying and stuff like that. So yeah, Connor Connor be probably top of the list. Mark Connor a few times actually. He's a good honest lad. He's, he's he, he lifted the monster. Yeah, he does. Like, he he wears his heart in his sleeve, and he's he doesn't expect anything off anyone that he's not going to do himself. Yeah. So he's um, I think he leads by doing more so than anything. But definitely when he talks, you, you listen. And he's it. a great lad to have around. So yeah, brilliant. Yeah.